we've got a round bottom to it. So now I'm going to start shaping the neck a little bit and I'm going to use a thumb grip. Um, I'm actually just using that action there and you can see that no matter how hard I'm doing that I know it's not going to go into my thumb because I'm controlling my thumb and my fingers and uh, I know that the knife won't go into my thumb. Now if I put my thumb in and pushed it right into the blade then I could make it, make it cut my thumb but I'm not. Now if we just transfer this to the spoon you can hook the thumb the other side of the bit of wood okay and do exactly the same action okay and I'm just using those fingers and this way we can start to shape the neck now with all things the wood has got a fiber it's got a grain so it's working well as I'm going down but once it gets to the bottom it wants to follow that grain it doesn't want to come back up okay so I'm going to turn the spoon round and work the other way. Another thing I do is I will rest the bit of wood against myself so when I'm pulling on it the bit of wood is staying still. Um, and again you can see my thumb is hooked over this side. And I'm just working to where the wood was trying to pull up. Now this is somewhere where the axe is a very efficient tool for going across the grain, which is what we're trying to do now. And uh, we sh we should have perhaps done a bit more shaping with the axe there if we're going to try and be ultimately efficient. You need to think about s symmetry now, so I don't really want to go in any deeper there. I'm going to shape the handle down a little bit, just so I don't get too confused. I need to keep keep a handle on the situation. Um, and the grip I'm actually going to use for that, again, rest it on my chest. I'm just going to pull towards myself. You can do it with just that grip, so just that but reversed, um, or you can put your thumb to one side because sometimes your thumb will get in the way when you're trying to cut. Okay, so uh, I'm just working back there until that meets. Now the key to control here is actually your elbow. You want to keep that tight to your body. If you have it out there and you're just waving that around, there's very little control, whereas if you've got it tucked in, then you've got a lot more control. Other things you can do with this hand, you can actually use these fingers to help help lever it, help push it along. And sometimes it's just that extra little push that you need um, that will give you a really nice controlled cut. So each time I'm pushing the bevel hard down onto the wood, which means that when I come along for the next cut, you get a nice smooth finish on it. Okay, so that's that's why in my mind it's quite nice and smooth. Compare that to this side. It's uh, and then I'll do that, trying to get that ridge going down the middle. So once we've got the top surface, sometimes you'll find that it's starting to tear. You see that it's tearing. That means it wants to work the other way. So instead of fighting it, you give in straight away and go fair enough wood. I come from the other side and if you are coming from the other side then there's no reason why you can't go like that the center so that's relatively good not worrying about the sides at the moment okay we'll, we'll worry about uh, what shape we want that handle all I'm thinking about is the top surface once we've done that we can now flatten this down a little bit okay just to just to get, take away wood because you don't want it too bulky um, and again you can either push it off like that or I quite like this and I've actually uh, it's, it's, it's very it's, it's not really technically the chest lever grip that I'm doing there I'm almost just holding that in place and just pulling through and I'm trying to get a slicing action instead of pulling it straight I'm slicing it through and it's good because I can see exactly what's going on hmm. allegedly the chickens are still loving the wood chips yeah, on the farm actually we have um, all the prunings from the apples trees you leave on the ground for the rabbits to have. They like the cambium, there's quite a lot of sugar in that in the winter um, because there's not a lot of other food about and it stops them gnawing away at the bottom of the tree. Now, you did see there that I managed to come uphill. It's only because it's a very sharp tool um, but you can see it's not left a very nice finish. 
So it's okay if you're roughing something out. If you can get away with coming uphill and it's saving you time, then that's fine. But I can't now, I've gone a bit deeper. And uh, I'm just guessing how far I want to go in. I'm going to turn it round and come back down. You don't want to overshoot like I've just done then, because it leaves nasty marks and you're losing control. This is all design really. Um, just do it how you like basically. Uh, get that a bit smoother. Um, okay, so I'm going to take a little bit off here. I'm going to work with a thin edge, so uh, I didn't really want that as thin as that, so I'm going to take it back till something I'm a bit happier about. And then uh, then I'll try and mirror it on the other side. Again, once it gets to the bottom of the valley, you need to come back. You can see the bits with the steepest curve. I'm using the point of the point of the knife because it's much thinner there, so you can turn it in to a smaller space. Uh, so I've done that side, and now I'll try and mirror this side. Is that what I've done? Yeah. <laughs> so in my mind, it's nice to have it a bit thicker at the top. The, for your for your hand, but you know that's entirely up to your design, basically. Um, just shape that. That'll be nice and strong on that edge. Then I've got to bevel these edges up. Um, so just. Take that in a little bit more, and that one. And then if I just take a bevel off there, and a bevel off there, we don't have too many sharp edges now, so the wood will be a lot stronger, it won't chip. Like that, and it leaves a relatively nice effect oh, on it. Yeah. Right, okay, so. We just tidy up this bit here going down to the bowl. Another grip I'm doing. This is very good with a Swedish fire still as well, incidentally. You push the back of your blade against the Swedish fire still like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm using the front of the blade and using it as a control cut. And not only can you push it, you can also leave a, like that. Okay. And just tidying up that front edge. This can be edited out, can't it, if I'm getting boring. Cause... And then we'll start hollowing out the bowl. Before I hollow out the bowl, I bevel the edge. What do you mean by that? So the bevel is just the taking the corners off, basically. Mm -hmm. And that bit there is going to be the surface left after hollowing out the spoon. So I don't need to touch these bits. The cuts that I'm doing now, in theory, should be left untouched. I say should. I, in theory, am planning to leave these cuts untouched. Who am I to say what people should and shouldn't do?